What does football mean to the English? That's what our reporter Axel wants to know on the day of the preliminary round game against Uruguay. His first destination in London? A journey into the past. England is the birthplace of football. And Craven Cottage, the stadium of Fulham FC, is the oldest in the city. Unfortunately, he can't get in because there's construction going on between seasons, but he'll make the best of it. Football's a, a, a cornerstone of our whole society, has a lot of money in it, we all love it, we all have our own club teams that we absolutely adore, but we just, we just think we're better than we are. But that's fine, because that's life. Well, I think it's cultural. I think um, people have been born and bred with it. It's tribal, people belong to a team. Why is it so important? Because England love football and they will win the World Cup. The headlines of the day send a clear message. They're looking forward to an exciting game. But what are the England fans really enthusiastic about? Outside a pub in North London, Axel meets his candidates for the Euromax World Cup test. Chris Finnegan, Helen Dagley and Paul Wardsky. Three passionate fans of the England team who responded to his call. Okay, now it's time for our World Cup spirit test here in London with uh, English fans. Uh, we were in Italy, we met uh, some uh, guys in Napoli, we were in Berlin, we met Brazilians in Berlin. And right now the Italian team is leading with like 20 points in total. You think you can beat this? Easily. Easily? <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> Don't we always beat the Italians? <laughs> The first round in the World Cup test, free kicking. The English fans have no luck here. I think that was very representative of England's chances if we actually do enter into a penalty shootout. <laughs> What's the reason for this? Um, bad practice, I think. We're just out of the game a little bit. Not enough drink. Not enough drink. Yeah, I think we need more drink. More drink? <laughs> Come on. This just got to get drunk. In the pub, the three meet a few friends. Support for the next round in the World Cup test. The second round of our uh, World Cup spirit test is our quiz, OK? So I'm going to test your knowledge on your own national team. On the English national team, quite easy. I hope your result won't be as disastrous <laughs> as uh, with a striker's corner, OK? Against whom did England win its one and only World Cup final? Do you have any idea? Chris? <laughs> they like Primary somewhere school. in Europe. Germany! Yes! <laughs> okay. Second question. Which English national player scored the controversial goal in the World Cup final in 1966? I'm going to say Jeff Hurst. Correct, okay. Three more points for you. Which English national player holds the record for playing the most matches? Anyone, any idea? Golden yeah, Golden yeah. Banks. Sorry? Golden Banks. I had a look it up, but no, that's uh, not uh, correct. It's Peter Shilton. Oh! 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 The last game in the test. Do you know your opponent? Here, Axel's candidates must assign the faces of three players from Uruguay to the correct jerseys. For this, they have 45 seconds. For a moment, there's uncertainty, but then there's a result. OK, we, we have a final result now. You scored uh, 15 points. To be honest, that, that's way behind Italy and uh, Brazil. Yeah, that's normally where we sit in football. <laughs> As a consolation, Axel buys everyone a beer afterwards. Because in England, football is unthinkable without it. Then the group match against Uruguay starts. There's an explosion of cheers when England briefly equalise, but that turns to disappointment after the 2-1 defeat at the hands of the South American team.
my job as World Cup reporter won't get boring, that's for sure. And although the English fans didn't do so well in our Euromax World Cup spirit test, I never met fans before who support their team so impassionate from the first to the last second. And something else is quite clear to me. For today, I'm done with driving by myself.